Well, it was a, it was of course an ex most extraordinary day, and the and the remaining three days after that, four days until the funeral service, uh, were 24-hour days for all of us. Uh, very uh, terribly sad, obviously terribly emotional experience. And the first uh, couple of hours. Uh, uh, after the bulletin cleared on the United Press wires that shots had rung out in Dealey Plaza while the President's motorcade went through and then built to the fact he'd been wounded and then the Parkland Hospital scene and the fact he died. Uh, the first uh, 10 minutes or so we were on radio, I mean on, on audio only because we had learned then for the first time we had to have a camera hot and ready to go at all times in our newsroom. I think that's still the policy today. But then we didn't have, and it takes a while to warm up a iconoscopic lens and a camera and uh, the tubes and uh, and we couldn't get on the air for about uh, on television for about 10 minutes but then we were on solid for four days when the assassination came and I've seen this thing repeated far too often <laughs> nowadays uh, the um, uh, there was a moment when I had to announce that he was dead that I almost broke down uh, and uh, almost had a little trouble I did have some trouble getting the words out but we in the news and television news particularly, but all the news people, operate very much like emergency personnel, fire police, hospitals. Uh, our adrenaline flows faster. We've got a job to do. We're doing the job and we're concentrating on that rather than the emotional impact. Uh, we find out now that there's a psychological uh, trauma that uh, people who have to do that sort of job go through. And I think we go through it in, in news, too. And uh, not until you have to hit that punchline that he's dead uh, does it come to you, the full emotional uh, meaning of this thing. And that's what hit me at the time.